Okay, so today we're gonna continue on with day two of the complex numbers, section 1.5a. So we already saw that you need to memorize that i is equal to uh, the square root of negative one and that i squared equals negative one. Remember, standard form is always gonna have the real part and then the imaginary part. And what we're gonna see today is when we square root a negative number, we would square root the number part just like normal, but then the negative one, when we square root that becomes an I. So that would be in standard form. Then we did some examples of multiplying and adding and subtracting. Here's where we saw the conjugate. And remember the conjugate is just going to be the same numbers, but an opposite sign on that I value. Remember, just like with radicals, you can never ever leave an I in the denominator of a fraction. So you're gonna have to rationalize. And you do that by multiplying it by the complex conjugate. We did some example 12 and 13. All right, so we're, we already did 12 and 13. <coughs> Remember the answer to number 12 was two plus two I. The answer to number 13 was just negative i. So now we're at number 14, and this is where we left off yesterday. Okay, so remember, you can't leave this i in the denominator, so we need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the complex conjugate of that denominator. And remember, same numbers, but opposite signs. So I'm gonna multiply both the numerator and the denominator by four plus two i. Now the numerator needs to be foiled. Remember the shortcut for the denominator, I can just do first and last. Um, again, if you forget, just remember you're foiling both the numerator and the denominator. So once I foil the numerator here, I get two plus four gives me eight. I'm sorry, two times four gives me eight. And then when I go ahead and do the outer, I get 4i, and then when I do the inside, I get 12i, and then finally last gives me positive 3i times positive 2i is positive 6i squared, and then the denominator, all I need to do is first and last, which gives me four times four is 16, and then negative two i times positive two i is negative four i squared. Now you could do outer and inner on that denominator, but it will cancel. So now let me go ahead and simplify what's in my numerator so I can combine these two middle terms here, and then I need to also change this i squared to a negative one. So for my numerator, the eight stays the same. I'm gonna change that middle part to a 16i. I'm gonna change that i squared to a negative one. And then the denominator, same thing. I need to change this i squared to a negative one. So I have 16 minus four times negative one. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply those negative ones. This actually becomes positive four this becomes negative six. So now I have eight plus the 16 I minus the six, and then the denominator is the 16 plus four, so that'll become 20. And then I can also add these two real parts here, and then eight minus six is gonna give me two plus the 16 I over 20, now I can simplify, I can divide all of these by two. So this becomes a one, don't forget about that one. This becomes a 10 and an eight. So final answer here is one plus eight i over 10. Now also recognize that you could pull it apart, one tenth plus, and then you could simplify the eight over 10, because then it would become this, and then you can reduce that and do one-tenth plus four-fifths i. Any one of these would be acceptable. So you could leave it like this, 
you can pull it apart so that you could just simplify this part of the fraction. When you're doing the homework, read how WebAssign wants you to enter it. If they want you to pull it apart or if they let you keep it together. 15, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We can't leave this I in the denominator. We need to multiply by the complex conjugate. My complex conjugate is going to be five plus I. You multiply that to the numerator and the denominator. Because essentially what we're multiplying that fraction by is one because anything divided by itself is one, but it is gonna change the look of it and it gets rid of that I in the denominator. So again, you're gonna FOIL the numerator. So once I FOIL that, I get 15 plus 3i plus 10i plus 2i squared. And then the denominator, I can just do first and last. So 25 minus i squared Remember, we need to change all these i squareds into negative ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I can also combine this middle. So now my new problem is gonna be 15 plus 13i plus two times negative one, 25 minus negative one. Because the subtraction sign was here and then the negative one, the I squared becomes the negative one. So now I can go ahead and turn this negative negative here and this bottom becomes 25 plus one. And then over here, this will become a negative two. So then now you can combine these like terms and 15 minus two gives me 13 plus 13 I over 25 plus one, which is 26. I can now simplify this. I can actually divide them all by 13. This becomes a one, a one, and a two. Don't forget about those ones. It's not like it disappears. So my final answer here is going to be one plus I over two. Same thing, we're gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. So four minus three i to both the numerator and the denominator. Again, I have to FOIL that numerator. Once I FOIL the numerator, it becomes 16 minus 12 i minus 12 i plus nine i squared. The denominator, you can do the shortcut and just do first and last. So 16 minus nine I squared. Again, we're gonna change these I squareds into negative ones. We also can combine the two middle terms here. So once I go ahead and combine the middles, I get 16 minus Twenty-four i uh, plus nine times negative one. Sixteen minus nine times negative one. So again, this turns into a negative nine. This turns into a positive nine. And now all I have to do is combine my like terms here. The sixteen minus nine. This gives me seven minus 24i, and then 16 plus nine, 25. And again, nothing simplifies on this one. Okay, so for the first one, whenever you have a negative under a square root, you're gonna pull out the negative by pulling an i out of the radical. Now, if you, at the beginning, wanna show that this number that's under the radical negative three, you could factor it into negative one times positive three, and then the square root of negative one, you're memorizing is i, and then the three can't be broken down. And that would be in simplest form. But just remember, whenever you see a negative under the radical, what's coming out of that negative is an i. Now, 
Technically, you could also write it square root of three and then put the I behind it. That I is not under the square root symbol. For this 16, again, we could show that it's 16 and it doesn't matter the order that you put it. So if you put it this way, and if you recognize 16 is a perfect square, square root it, and then the square root of negative one is I. If you didn't recognize 16 was a perfect square, keep breaking it down till it's prime. For the 48, negative 48, break it down first. You could do 48 times negative one. And then now come up with factors that multiply to give you 48. Whenever I see 48, I always think 16 times three. Um, probably more common would have been six times eight, but then you'd have to keep breaking it down till it's prime. So here, square root of 16 is four. Can't break down the three. Square root of negative one is I. So technically you could leave your answer like this. I like to go ahead and put everything that's out of the radical in the front and then the radical. But remember, multiplication is commutative. It doesn't matter if you put the four and the I in the front, if you put the radical in the front and then the four I in the back, the order here doesn't matter. But I always tend to put it like this. Then for the negative 500, Example 20. So again, I just went ahead and I go ahead and do 500 times negative one. And then I start breaking my 500 down. So you could do <coughs> two and 250. You, I'm gonna do five and 100, because I know 100 is the biggest perfect square that's a factor. Um, of 500, and then right away I can see 100 is a perfect square, square root it. The five is not, leave it underneath, and then square root the negative one. So again, I'm gonna put it as 10i radical five. However, you could have left it just how I had left it here. So any of these are acceptable. For the negative 80, now notice here there's a little negative sign outside so this negative sign that's outside of the radical, it's just gonna make my final answer negative. It's just gonna go in front of the whole thing. So I have the negative sign, and then I can break down the 80 into 80 times negative one, and then I gotta start breaking down the 80. I could do 16 times five, And then if you wanna just keep bringing down the negative one, you can, and keep bringing this negative sign down. So then the negative sign's here. Square root of 16 is four. Five stays underneath. The square root of negative one is i. So my final answer here is negative four i, square root five. Okay, so for this one, Remember when you do the factor trees and you get a pair of numbers and then that becomes the perfect square and it comes out? So if you wanna think of this as, I got a pair of negative sevens that are under the radical, so that's just my answer, negative seven. However, if you didn't remember that, then what you would do is break these down. You can't multiply this negative seven times negative seven and get positive 49. You gotta break it down, negative one, times positive seven, negative one, times positive seven, and then pull all the stuff out. So this becomes an I, this becomes an I, and then now you have I times I is I squared. You got a pair of square root sevens, so then that comes out. And then remember, I squared equals negative one, so this is negative one times seven, which is negative seven. So again, recognize you got a pair and then whatever was under the radical comes out or break it down. The next one, we're gonna go ahead and break these down. So again, this is gonna actually break down into I. So if I do negative one times six, negative one times 10, this will come out as an I. I'm gonna break down the six 
into two times three. This will come out as an I. I'm gonna break this down to two times five. And now I look for my pairs. I have a pair of square root twos. The three and the five do not have a pair. So I'm gonna multiply those two back. So then I also multiply my I's. So when I multiply my I's, I get I squared. And then I'm gonna pull the two out and then multiply the three and the five back. So now the I squared becomes negative one times two times the square root of 15. So final answer here, negative two square root 15. For number 24, again, what we can do is break this down into negative one <coughs> times 20, and then negative one times the square root of two. And then what I can do here is this becomes I square root 20, I square root two. I divided by I, these just become ones. And then I can also divide the 20 and the two. So final answer here is the square root of 10. Again, I'm gonna break down the 48. So I'm gonna make it negative one times positive 48. And then the 24, um, I got the square root of 24. Now you could try to factor it, but I'm gonna divide first. So I'm gonna pull out the negative one as an I but I could simplify the 24 and the 48. I can divide this by 24 and this by 24, and then this becomes the square root of two. So then now what I have, or I could factor it. Let me factor it, that might look better. Sorry, let's do that. But you could simplify it that way. I'm gonna factor the 48 into 24 times two. And then the bottom, I'm just gonna leave the 24. And then those will cancel. And then I can square root the negative one and then leave the radical two. And you're done. Now, if you would have rather divided it, you could have done it the other way as well. So if you did that, negative one times 48 and then 24 and again, simplify that to a one, and then that becomes a two, and it's the same thing. Let's try 26. It looks like 23. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it out, as pull the eye out. So again, if you don't wanna show that the, the square root of negative five is negative one times five. If you automatically recognize that this is gonna become I radical five, and this will be I radical 15, you can do that. Now, you can either choose to go ahead and multiply these and get square root of 75, and then now you still gotta go back and break down the 75. So this I squared becomes a negative one I can break 75 back to the five and the 15, or I can even do 25 and three. So negative one times five times radical three gives me negative five square root three. Probably what would have been better is if you just from the beginning don't multiply it and do the factor tree. So this would have become I square root five this could have become I square root five times square root three. You could make the positive 15 that, and then you got the pair of fives, it comes out. You also have your I's that you can multiply. So it becomes I squared times five times radical three. Again, the I squared is negative one, and then negative five square root three. It doesn't really matter, whatever you're comfortable with. For the next one, number 27, and do it over here so there's more room. So again, I've got the square root of negative 70, the square root of negative seven. 
So again, I can pull this out as i times 70 and then i times the square root of seven. And again, I could either divide it or factor it. If I just divide what's under the radical, the i's cancel because anything divided by itself is one. And then 70 divided by seven is just the square root of 10. If you would have preferred to break down the square root of 70 and make it seven times 10, and then you could see that all of these cancel and become ones, and then it's just the square root of 10 also. And then the last one on the, no, 28. Sorry, there's two more. All right, so for 28, negative square root 40 over the square root of 20. So I can make this i times the square root of 2 times the square root of 20. I could factor the, the 40 and make it 2 times 20. And then it matches with the denominator. And then your final answer is just i square root 2. And then number 29, we have the square root of negative 12 times the square root of negative 6 over the square root of 8. So for this one, you can either choose to multiply it. So if you wanted to pull this out like this, And then if you multiplied it, you would have gotten i squared, 12 times 6, 72. And then you can see that you could divide 72 and 8. And this would have been become a 9. And then the i squared becomes negative 1 times the square root of 9, oops, times the square root of 9, which is going to become 3. So negative 1 times 3. So final answer, negative three. Now let's say instead you wanted to break down the negative 12 and the negative six. So the other way you could do this is you could break down the 12, becomes i, and then you could do four times three, and then make the six i two times three. And then here you could break down the eight, no i. So it, you could make this four times two. And then look for things to simplify. So you could simplify the four with the four, the two with the two, and then now multiply what's left. So i times i is the i squared. And then we got a pair of square root threes. So that three comes out. And then i squared is negative 1, and then times 3, negative 3. So it's totally up to you how you go about doing this. Either way, we'll get you to the same answer. All right, so for number 30, again, I'm going to break down the 128. So for this one, it's negative 8 is already out. I'm going to pull an i out of the 128, and then I'm going to simplify, and I could break the 128 into 2 times 64. And let's change this, sorry, let's change this to a plus sign. All right, so make it negative 8 plus the square root of negative 128. And then now what I can do is simplify the square root of 64. So that'll come out. So then now I have negative eight plus eight i square root two over four. And now I can simplify. Divide all of these by four. And then my final answer is gonna be negative two plus two i square root two. Try 31. I'm going to break down the negative 18. 
So I have negative 9 plus, I'll pull out the i, and then I'm going to break the 18 into 9 times 2. Have the 3 in the bottom. I can now square root the 9. So then now I have negative 9 plus 3i square root 2 over 3. I now can simplify. I can divide all of these by 3. So this becomes a 1, a 1, and a negative 3. So my final answer here is negative 3 plus i square root 2. And then lastly, number 32 on this slide. Again, I'm going to break down the square root of negative 50. So I'm going to pull out the i. So 5 plus i. I'm going to break the 50 down into 25 and 2. I can now square root the 25. So then now I'm left with 5 plus 5i square root 2 over 10. And then now I can simplify. I can divide all of these by 5. And then now I'm left with 1, 1, and 2. So my final answer here is 1 plus i radical 2 over 2. And again, when you're doing the homework, if WebAssign wants you to pull it apart and make them separate fractions, then you'll do that. When we start using your calculator, or if you get a question like this on a standardized test, and you can now use your calculator for the entire test, there is actually an I button on your calculator, and you could raise it to any power. However, for this test and this quiz, no calculator yet, so you have to do it by hand. The I button on the TI-84 or 83, it's on the decimal point. Um, so you'll see it there, but I'll show you that um, later on. So for now, we're just going to use the fact that I squared is equal to negative 1. So what I'm going to do, now there's different ways to do this. What I like to do is break it down and turn it into I squared. So what, for example, let's say I have I to the ninth before I do the I to the fifth there. I'm going to change I to the ninth. I'm going to bring it down one and then times it by i. Because remember, when you multiply numbers that have the same base, you take your exponents and add them. So i to the ninth is equivalent to i to the eighth times i to the first. So then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this even exponent and I'm going to divide it by two. And I'm going to make this i squared raised to the fourth power, and then I have times i to the first. So then now, remember that i squared equals negative 1. So I replace i squared with negative 1. Whenever you raise an e, um, a number to an even power, if it's negative, it turns positive. So this negative 1 is going to turn to be positive 1 times i, and the final answer here is i. All of these questions where you're raising i to a power, the final answer, as long as that exponent is positive, is either going to be a 1, a negative 1, an i, or a negative i, depending on the calculations. So let's go ahead and try them. So let's do number 33. And I have i to the fifth. Now, you could just take that exponent and divide it by 2, and then the remainder is the extra i. But if you want to break it down to i to the fourth, make it one lower, and then i to the first, then now I'm going to change that power of 4, and I'm going to make it i squared raised to the second power. Because remember, a power to a power, you multiply. So now this is equivalent to i to the fifth. Again, I'm going to change this i squared into a negative 1. 
it's raised to an even power. So negative one times negative one is positive one, and then times I, and my final answer here is I. Let's try the next one. 34. This one is I raised to the 32nd power. Notice this one's already even, so I don't have an extra leftover I. So here I'm gonna change it, I'm gonna take 32, divide it by two, and I raise I squared to the 16th power, because that's 32 divided by two, because two times 16 is 32. Change this to a negative one, and now negative one raised to an even exponent turns positive. And the final answer here is one. Let's try number 35. I to the 33. So same thing that we just got here. Remember, we can make it 32 times I to the first. So we just did I to the 32. I squared times 16. And then this leftover I. So this became a one times I. And the final answer here is I. Thirty-six is a negative exponent. Remember, a negative exponent makes it a fraction. So thirty-six i to the negative sixteen. Remember, this means move it under a one, and then make the exponent positive. And now I'm going to change that sixteen to two times eight. And now I have negative one raised to an even power, which makes it become positive one. So one over one, final answer is one. Two more. This one is negative 101 and then negative 102. All right, so for 37, I raised to the negative 101 power. Again, remember, make it a fraction first, and then make that exponent positive. And now I'm gonna change this to one over i to the hundredth times i. I'm gonna change that hundredth power to two times 50, I divide it by two. So i squared raised to the 50th times i one over negative one to the 50th times i. Negative one's raised to an even power, so it becomes positive times the i. Remember, we can never ever leave an i in the bottom. I gotta rationalize. So I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by i. You don't need to do negative i on this. And then one times i is just i i times i is i squared, and then i squared becomes negative one, and then i divided by negative one is just negative i. So that one was a lot. Why would you want to Last one, number 38. And then this one is i, what is it? i to the negative 102. So I raised to the negative 102 power. Again, negative exponent, make it a fraction. I'm gonna divide 102 by two and I get 51. So I squared raised to the 51st power. And then now I squared is negative one, but now my negative one is raised to an odd exponent. So then this stays negative one. And then one divided by negative one, final answer is negative one.